Hey folks, this is Shane and Patrick with SE Knives and Reynolds Veteran Training, and we're back with another of our favorite gear series. Today, what are we what are we talking about today, Patrick? Uh, we're gonna be looking at the Hill People Gear kit bags. All right. Uh, we've known about these bags for a while. Once again, we referenced Mike Mahler introducing these to us a while back. Uh, and, and if you follow us on social media, you see that this is a, a pretty regular piece of kit for us. While the loadouts may change from time to time, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, um, they largely stay the same. We use these kit bags for kind of like a 24-hour yeah. emergency. We try to keep our essentials on us to where if we had to get through a night, we could. Mm -hmm. Patrick, why don't you go ahead and go through yours? All right, we'll start on the outside. Um, got a rugged radio. It's programmed with all our, our channels we use and uh, call outs, search and rescue. Got a um, Garmin GPS under here. Got a SE4 mounted on the Molly on the bottom. So um, that way, if I've got the kit bag on, I've always got at least a fixed blade knife with me. Up front, Sunto MC2 compass, one of our nav notepads. Uh, on the inside, whistle. Can't stress the need for a whistle enough, uh, especially if you will get lost in the woods. Some cordage, some bank line, another pin, spare batteries, small Petzl E light, backup headlamp. We've got a Nebo light that can be mounted, you know, on the Molly also. If I need some more light, hands free. Tourniquet, Exotac rip spool. So that's basically a gear aid. There's a needle, there's some duct tape. There's You can also even put a, a fishing kit in there if you wanted to. It's got some twine on the back or some, some bra light. braided line. Here. Yeah. Barrel rod, Leatherman, Wingman, Wingman, lighter. Some more Kevlar cord. Get in that pocket. Hey, real quick, uh, this insert was made by Mike Adams, a buddy of ours mm -hmm. uh, from Johnson City, who does a lot of really cool stuff, and it's, it's something that adds some, uh, some modularity to it. Uh, you can, can change the loadout a little bit, yep. and of course you got the PALS panel on back. Yeah, and some people just mount stuff directly to that, you know, like mag pouches or, or other little, you know, pouches, cases, etc. And the main thing that drew me to the kit bags was the ability to carry concealed while you're wearing a backpack, especially with a waist belt. It always seemed difficult. I didn't want to have it mounted visibly on the waist belt. And if you're wearing it, you know, on your waist and then the waist belt around it could get uncomfortable. So this back pocket here, got a Glock 22 with a TLR1 light on it. Now I'm cut off a little holster that I had just because I was having an issue with the, with the light mounted on it when it was in there the light was going off I'll just leave that on since it's so hard to get off yeah uh, Hill People Gear sells a Dale Fricks I think it's called a Zacchaeus uh, trigger guard yeah. holster that actually attaches to this and I've used it quite a bit it's it's an awesome piece of kit the only problem that I see is I'm gonna have to mod I have the same situation yeah. where I'm running a weapon mounted light on a on a, on a Glock and I'm gonna to have to modify that so I can use it. So I'm doing something a little different as well. I kept noticing when I'd lay it down, I'd look over and see a light coming through the bag. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, that's it for mine. All right, uh, a couple things I'll, I'll talk about too. Um, a lot of people tend to struggle uh, with the grom locks on these things. Some people cut them off. Um, what I do with mine that's a little different is I just fold them back. If you just fold them back and attach them back here, I do like to have the grom locks you got it? Yeah. Because I always have my gloves on there. Um, I run OR, Outdoor Research Gloves. I think these are called the Direct Root Gloves. Um, they're good to work with, good good on rope, and, and so we've always got them close by. Uh, this is a little piece of kit right here that is a pill bottle that has flagging tape. It's got a slot cut in the top. Mark McWhorter, uh, one of our SAR members, came up with this, and then I modified it to where uh, I just put a little lanyard cord on here. I'm attaching it to that grom lock that's bent backwards. And um, it's just a way to, to use flagging tape to mark uh, any clues you might find on a search. Uh, I am running a Streamlight, what is this thing called? Bandit Pro, uh, just woven through the Molly. 
here and one of the reasons I like this is because we're often using a, um, a map we're at night I can adjust this thing to where I turn it on it's down below me it doesn't necessarily blow out my night vision uh, especially if you get a reflection on a map or something where a headlight is directly reflecting back to you I can hold this down it reflects the light differently um, and it's adjustable uh, one of the things that we run into is headlight discipline when you're with a group of people that aren't quite familiar with it. I mean, we have some really bright headlights and you'll get your retinas seared by the new guy because he always looks you directly in the eye with the headlight. So having this to be able to point it down at my feet where we have ambient light, where we can communicate in the dark without, you know, searing people's retinas is always... What's, what's funny is no matter how many people are doing this, they, they don't, they get, it. They don't, they get, don't it. get it. So uh, headlight discipline, folks, it's a thing. Um, uh, I've got one of our... Uh, this is, I alternate between the Zancudo fixed and the Emlay uh, here, depending on what we do. Um, I can run a radio here. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see me run a radio uh, on the side because I can key it here and talk here. And I always dummy cord the radio back to a Grom lock. We we lose radios if you don't do that. Uh, one other last piece of kit that I'll talk about here is people always ask me what's that doohickey on your shoulder is uh, I often carry a camera and, and so this is a Peak Designs uh, I think it's called a capture clip uh, and I can just it's kind of like a quick release for the camera uh, if I have to go digging through a backpack or something it's hard to uh, you just don't take as many pictures mm -hmm. and that's kind of my job so I try to take pictures Jeff does a good job on some of our search and rescues I don't take our good camera I just my good I just use a cell phone um, on the outside of my kit I keep a uh, right in the rain this is a nav kit um, this is the C935 kit it's got the same patch uh, the same compass as Patrick the MC2 global uh, from Sunto it's got uh, a, a well used it's got our compass card navigation I've had this thing forever it's got my pace count in it. it's got all my notes and I can also use it um, this I use this predominantly just for navigation uh, I have another notepad in here a um, couple sources uh, to write with uh, always because it never seems to fail that anytime you get out in the woods that's when your writing utensils always uh, die off on you I like having my nav kit right there because it's close at hand. Um, one thing that I like to do with a lot of my important stuff is I like to try to dummy cord everything in because I have actually had this, it, it, before I did that, I've, I've had it open and leaned over and just had a, had a pocket dump there that it was unintended. So what I've got here is a rescue whistle, uh, another Petzl E-Lite. Folks, if you don't have a rescue whistle, we were on a search and rescue in the Sipsy Wilderness uh, a week and a half ago. People lost in the woods. They could hear us yelling. We couldn't hear them yelling. If they'd have had a whistle, um, it makes all the difference it'd in the world. It'll save them a night in the woods. <laughs> yeah, it'll save them a night in the woods and a lot of walking by a lot of other searchers who had to go back in the next morning. Basically searched all night and then and found them. Um, trying to yell, you'll blow out your voice. Oh, yeah. You can blow a whistle all night all and people long. will find you. Um, Important stuff uh, to us is fire. So this is kind of uh, everything dummy corded here. A ferro rod, uh, Exotac lighter, uh, a big lighter here in a cover. Uh, also from Exotac, Exotac fire rod. Um, I have a uh, pocket bellows with some duct tape around it too. I use duct tape for a lot of different things, not just gear fixes, but also I have some pretty prominent calcaneous uh, bones, heels, prominent heel bones, and I often use duct tape to pre-wrap those. Um, the pocket bellows is basically an extendable antenna that allows you to blow flame. A pair of gloves, um, a cat tee. I've used a rat tourniquet for years and years with no issues. I've had a lot of people give us, uh, throw some shade our way for those things, but I get complete occlusion. I've had them stuffed everywhere for years. I'm slowly replacing them with cat tees, but um, I use either and, and feel pretty good about it. Uh, a Sharpie is good for everything. If you have a patient, um, we we we'll, we can actually write on people's foreheads if there's an <laughs> issue. Uh, writing on marking tape, it works well in a lot of oh, different yeah. conditions. Way better than a ballpoint pen, so a Sharpie is, is really important. Um, so this is a, a panel uh, that Hill People Gear sells uh, from First Spear. Uh, I can't remember the name. I think it's a pocket, 58 pocket sure, or something. Yeah. Uh, I keep another notepad here. 
the notepad is important for keeping documentation on our searches and everything else. Um, Duke Cannon uh, lip balm. Uh, I get fever blisters if I get out in direct sunlight for a long time. That stuff works really well. I've got uh, a couple different types of meds uh, in one little box here. I have a fire kit, just a tender kit that's got tender uh, Vaseline coated uh, cotton balls, some uh, fatwood shavings in there. Uh, a Leatherman signal here. Uh, my titanium spork. <laughs> I don't leave home without it because you never know, you never know. When, when food may appear. Um, so lastly, uh, and, and like Patrick, um, we, like the, we like the ability to carry in a concealed way that doesn't draw attention. If you have a sidearm mounted on a backpack, if you put the backpack down, then you no longer have a sidearm with you. Uh, it presents a lot of different problems. Uh, so the ability to comfortably carry and quickly access a firearm uh, without drawing any attention is very important. Um, so in bear country, uh, Patrick can also show you, this is a Smith & Wesson Performance Sitter 629-6 uh, in 44 Magnum, uh, I carry it and a speed loader uh, in a, at a Texas hog hunt um, a couple years ago whenever we were doing some work with Ashley Emerson in the Ashley Game Knife. Um, Jackson, my oldest son, and I walked up on a hog that was danger close uh, and it started coming towards us and he was trying to find it in a scope. Uh, he got a round off at about the same time I had pulled from here gone to single action I shot it uh, within seven yards I let him know what side I was on pretty much um, <laughs> didn't hear that never heard the shot never felt the recoil uh, but I, I was glad uh, given that it's right here the way this thing is made you kind of have to you, you keep these uh, top two right here the back two you can kind of keep them to where they're they're not together you grab it and rip it I ripped that thing down went to single action and fired all in, in pretty one smooth motion but I'd done the practice too so um, like Patrick I swap in some things uh, and cut out some yeah. things time to time one thing that I, I carry a lot whenever we're doing extended operations is a replaceable battery charger and if I'm doing that then you kind of have to be careful with weight. Uh, one thing about these kit bags that I'll say is, it's easy to stuff them. You and I both have yeah. a, a heavy recon, yeah. and uh, heavy recon's a little bigger, and man, you can pack so much in there that you can you can feel it. So finding that Goldilocks level of, of weight to accessibility. When it's, when it's loaded full, especially on a hot summer day when you got a heavy pack on your back, and now you've got a heavy one on your front, you know, after a few miles, you really start feeling it, just uh, sweating if nothing else, because it's just trapping body heat. So you have to be mindful about not loading too heavy. Yeah, and when I put that 629 in here with a, with a mag, with a, well, not a mag, but a, with, a, with a speed loader, yeah. uh, I normally take some of the redundant items yeah. out and put them in a pack. I just have to be a little more mindful because I do want to keep it comfortable. I like to wear mine high and tight. I, I want that thing to fit. Uh, uh, pretty snug, and I find that it, it carries better that way. We've got buddies, David Walker, and it's always <laughs> flopping around. He, he doesn't care. To each his own. Um, Patrick also carries a 44. Yeah, it's a Taurus tracker. Um, one thing about it is it's not stainless, so like when I, when I said, when it's hot, you're sweating through everything, this will rust, and so I always make sure that I coat it real good with some of Casey's um, beef fat from Red Eyed Hog. Uh, it's just a mixture of uh, beeswax and um, What's the word I'm looking for, Shane? Rendered. It's rendered. It's rendered pork fat. Rendered pork fat. And uh, just kind of coat the outside real good with it. I've done that several times and it works great. You know, it doesn't mess anything up and it keeps it from rusting quite as bad. Okay. So if you're still watching like we always do, uh, we're going to give, uh, do another prize package here. Thank you for watching this far. Uh, this time what I'd like for you to do it, it, in the comments below make whatever comment you want to and then I would like for you to suggest a couple books that you like um, cool. and that's gonna be just a little something yeah. different um, uh, so I'll, I'll put the date of the giveaway in the video notes because we're filming this kind of in advance so I'm not real sure what that's gonna be uh, so watch the video notes and uh, do what you gotta do on uh, the books if you have any questions, any comments on our loadout, on what we carry, what we like, what we don't like, uh, feel free to hit us up here. Patrick, you got anything else? I don't. Um, just 
thanks again for all your support and and if you own any sc products we, we really appreciate your business hey folks you know what to do subscribe turn on notifications on youtube on instagram on facebook uh like and comment thanks guys thanks